don't forget the three Ps. Is the airway patent, meaning is it open and unobstructed? Is the patient phonating properly, meaning is their air moving up and down the airway properly? And lastly, is it protected? Do they have a gag reflex or are they so obtunded that they're not gonna be able to control the stomach fluid coming up into their airway? Now remember, when your patient is in a C-collar, you're gonna to wanna to protect their C-spine. So in a patient who you're worried about a possible C-spine injury, you're not gonna to wanna to do your typical head tilt chin lift, obviously, because you're gonna hyperextend the C-spine. Instead, you're gonna have the assistant holding them, immobilizing their C-spine, and simply come behind the angles of their mandible, push up to do a jaw thrust. From there, you can inspect and look inside the airway. You're gonna use your yank hour suction to remove any secretions, and if you're concerned about a foreign body being in there, use your handy dandy McGill forceps to remove any obstruction. This is also a good time to inspect the anterior aspect of the neck. You're gonna feel for the trachea, make sure it's midline. Make sure there's no crepitus in the subcute tissue around the neck. And then you're gonna be listening and looking and feeling for air moving in and out for phonation. Lastly, if the patient is obtunded and you're hearing some gurgling sounds and you're concerned about whether they're protecting their airway, you're gonna to check to see if they have a gag. You can take a simple handy dandy tongue blade, simply assess if there's no gag, you know you need to move on to your next step. If they have no gag, then you can use an oral pharyngeal airway. The best way to measure this is you're using the teeth to the angle of the mandible and lining it up. Essentially, you're just trying to get a tube past the tongue. And counterintuitively, you're actually gonna flip this guy backwards, go 180 degrees up against the hard palate, and then you're gonna flip it. And essentially, you're just getting past the tongue. If they have a gag, then you never wanna use this because the patient's gonna vomit all over you and they're gonna aspirate. Instead, you're gonna wanna use a nasal pharyngeal airway. Now, remember, this is contraindicated if your patient has a facial fracture. So if you have an obvious facial fracture, avoid this. Assuming you do not have a facial fracture, you can go ahead and use the NP. Lube up the NP, and then you're gonna insert it gently along the septum all the way to the back, down one nostril. Now that we have your airway assist device, it's time to bag the patient. Normally, in real life, you're gonna to wanna to have someone holding the C-spine for you. Assuming you're a single provider, you're gonna do the CE technique with one hand. You're gonna lay the mask, the BVM, over the patient's mouth, create a C shape around the mask here to grab a good seal, and E, you're gonna pull up with one hand. With your other free hand, you're gonna be squeezing the bag, and you're gonna be looking for the chest to be rising and falling, confirming the air is going in and out. Now, ideally, you have more than one person. You have someone to help you, whether it's a respiratory therapist, a nurse, or a tech. In which case, you're still gonna do the CE technique, but with two hands. You're gonna make that C shape around the mouth, and E with the other fingers, pulling up on the mandible, and then you're gonna have your assistant bag for you. Now, if you're at this point, you already should have your intubation tray ready to go so that you can secure a definitive airway. Chest wall stable, abdomen soft, non-tender, Opening set of vitals, heart rate's 122, SPO2 is 100, blood pressure's 122 over 83. 